guys, Happy New Year and welcome back to my channel. To start things off, I figured I would do my makeup favorites for 2015 just to kind of round off the year even though it is 2016 when this video is going to be going up. I have done a beauty favorites for the entire year for the past couple of years. This year though, I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently. This is actually going to be part one, which is just going to be my makeup favorites. And then I'm going to do a part two, which is going to be like skincare, hair care, tools, all that kind of like miscellaneous kind of beauty products. I just really wanted to make sure that I just shared my tried and true products that I used either consistently throughout the entire year for like a few months or just like products that like really just stood out to me as being amazing that I discovered this year. Before we get started, I just want to give you guys a huge thank you though for all of your continuous support on YouTube through 2015. This time last year I kind of like revived my YouTube and I kind of got really serious about it and started making videos again. And I'm gonna be honest, 2015 was a very hard year for me personally. I've had just a lot happen in my personal life and it's been a big struggle. And YouTube has just been such a positive and like happy outlet and such a good thing to kind of like put my energy into this year. It's just starting up my YouTube channel again was definitely the best thing I have ever done. And of course I wouldn't have had all of this success without you guys. You are the main reason that I am doing so well on YouTube and that I'm really enjoying it. So thank you guys so much. You honestly, you guys, I'll never be able to put into words how much I appreciate each and every one of you. So I really just truly thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. Like I said, I just really will never be able to put it into words how grateful I am. But anyways, if you have been around my channel for the entire year, this video is probably going to be a little bit repetitive for you because these are my yearly favorites. A lot of these I have mentioned in other videos throughout the year, but that's just how you guys know that these really are like true favorite, a lot of like holy grail products for me. Also be sure to check the description bar of this video once you are done because I'm going to add like a ton of links so if there's like products I mentioned and I have like related videos I'm going to have them linked in the down bar so if there's anything you want more information on definitely check the down bar at the end so naturally I'm going to start off with kind of face and complexion products the first is my Tarte BB primer and the second is actually my Tarte 12 hour Amazonian clay foundation this is like my all-time favorite holy grail like best foundation ever for me personally and Tarte as a brand was just like a huge favorite for me in 2015 I did a video on my top 10 favorite products from them so that will be one of the videos that I have linked. I pretty much all of the products in that video were favorites for me this year but I'm not going to go through and mention every single one of them in this video. My Tarte BB primer, definitely my favorite primer for the year. This is just a tinted primer and it just gives a really nice kind of extra added layer of coverage just to even out redness and anything like that if you have acne and like scarring like I do. And my Tarte foundation, this one is like pretty much empty. And it's just an amazing foundation. I even got my mom hooked on it this year. And it's a foundation that's truly suited to every skin type. I know people with dry skin, super oily skin like me, acne, regular skin, like everybody I know who has tried this loves it. Then I have also really loved the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. Even though this is a foundation geared towards dry skin, I love it for my oily skin. I apply it with a beauty blender and it provides just like amazing coverage. It's honestly insane. Since I have reviewed this, this is a foundation that I work into my routine all the time. I've used it pretty steadily for the past few months, I would say, and it's just really easy to apply in the morning if you just want something fast that gives really great coverage. You don't need to add like extra concealer or anything like that if you don't want to. It's just fast, it's easy, and I find because it is meant to be more hydrating, it never really looks cakey on me either, which is a big plus. And then for my last kind of foundation product, I have the Benefit Bigger Than BB Big Easy BB Cream, kind of, not really a BB cream. Now this is a liquid to powder product. It has SPF 35 and it is oil free. This is my go-to product when I am on vacation. It's really easy to apply with my fingers and just blends really easily. Like it never looks streaky or anything like that and it also builds quite well. My only complaint for this product is that since it is a liquid to powder finish, it can kind of draw attention to dry flaky patches on your skin. So definitely more a product for oily skin and even for me since my skin gets a little bit dehydrated, I just have to make sure my skin is well hydrated before I apply this. Next I want to talk a little bit about bronzer. Now I have two products here for bronzer that I used like crazy this year. The first is the NARS Laguna. I think we're all familiar with this product. Doesn't really need an introduction. I used up like a small size from a palette this year and as you can see I pretty much used up this full size as well. It's just so easy and flawless. There's a reason that it's a bestseller. If you have fair skin it just works so well. It's very neutral like it's not too cool, it's not too warm, it never looks ashy or muddy or like too orange. It's just kind of the perfect neutral bronzer. Then I have this little baby. This is my Too Faced Little Black Book of Bronzers. They don't currently sell this I believe but it's something that they kind of re-promote and I believe they probably 
probably will promote it, re-promote it in the future. And I'm sorry, this is so dirty, but it is basically a palette just with all of Too Faced bronzers that they sell. So you can buy any of these shades individually. Obviously, because you get so many different shades in this palette, it's insanely versatile. I can use it to do like my bronzer, my contour, my blush, my highlight. I can use it for eyeshadows. It's just a really awesome palette. And my favorite actually ended up being Endless Summer, which is their 16 hour wear waterproof bronzer. Honestly, what I do a lot with this is if I'm just like getting ready for work or whatever, I'll just pick it up, take my brush and swirl it in like any combination of the shades and bronze up my face and it just always works and looks really good. So like I said I don't believe this is currently available but if they do re-promote it and you see it for sale on Sephora or on the Too Faced website snatch it up right away because it is so worth it. Okay kind of weird but I'm jumping back to concealer because I realized I probably should have done this before I jumped into like powder products but anyways the first concealer I want to talk about is the NYX Above and Beyond Full Coverage Concealer. This is the concealer that I use to shape my brows and get really nice crisp crisp clean edges this is like an exact dupe for the makeup forever camouflage cream concealers that come in the little five palettes it's the exact same texture and yeah this is just perfect for sculpting your brows if you are someone who does that already try this out then for under eye correctors I have loved the Maybelline instant age rewind in the brightening shade I just use this before concealer on days when I want like ultra bright under eyes and I used it today and it's just kind of like a pinky kind of tone so it just adds kind of a little bit of like a highlight to your face and this dries very matte so I find it actually kind of works as a primer for my concealer because it really stays in place and I find it helps to prevent creasing when I layer this under concealer. Another Maybelline product for most of the year my go-to concealer has just been the Maybelline Fit Me. Very basic but it's just really easy to work with and blend and it doesn't really crease on me either but my top favorite for concealer and this is a product I didn't have for long because I ran out of it really fast. But this is definitely a product that like really, really stood out to me this year. And this is the YSL Touche Eclat Radiant Touch. This is just kind of like the classic Touche Eclat highlighting pen. This stuff just blew me away by how amazing it was this year. Specifically for the fact that it was so full coverage on my under eyes, but it was extremely lightweight. Like I never felt like I had product on. It didn't crease. It just looked so beautiful had this nice kind of like soft luminosity to it. It was just like flawless and stunning. This product, however, is extremely expensive and you get honestly like a third of the product you do with a regular concealer. So I'm like dying to repurchase it, but it's just so expensive. I don't know why they can't put more product in it. Like if it was the size of a regular concealer, I would repurchase it hands down, but I just went through it so fast. It probably lasted me maybe like six weeks at the most. I love it. If you want to splurge and try like an amazing under eye concealer and like highlighting concealer, it's just... I can't say enough good things about it. All right, so jumping back into the powder products, I wanna talk about highlighters, of course. I narrowed highlighters down to three, and the first one I don't think any of you guys will be surprised about, and it is the Laura Mercier Highlight 01. This is another product that I actually used up like a deluxe size sample of and repurchased the full size this year. It is just amazing. It is my go-to everyday highlight when I'm wearing like really light, natural makeup. Don't be fooled by the fact that this has matte in the name. I don't know why they do that. It's not actually matte at all. There it is swatch as you can see it has a beautiful kind of like satin sheen I've said this before but this is basically the perfect highlight if you don't want something as subtle as like the ambient lighting powders but you also don't want something as intense as like Mary Luminizer like this is kind of the perfect in between because it still does give you that beautiful glow without being like in your face like just disco ball intense <laughs> so smooth so easy to blend it's just perfection and then I have a Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. These like blew up this year thanks to Jaclyn Hill. And my favorite for these is actually Moonstone because I am definitely on the more fair side. I have mentioned before that Opal just doesn't have the same effect on fair skin as it does on like medium to tan skin. Moonstone is definitely the way to go. It's nice because it's still like a soft kind of like champagne, like it's not a stark white. So it still really like melds into your skin really well. This is what I have on today and it just gives a beautiful, beautiful glow. And there it is swatched next to the Laura Mercier one if you want to see kind of a comparison. It's definitely lighter and brighter, but like I said, still blends into the skin really well. And then finally for highlights, I have my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Trio. Sorry, this is always really hard to show on camera. But I actually really fell in love with this this year. It's never something I've gotten like a ton of use out of in the past. But what I actually started doing with this back in the summer is I've started mixing together all three of the shades. And that's a tip I got from one of my friends on Instagram. 
but I just take like a really fluffy brush and just kind of dust them through all three of them and just apply that to the center of my face and it just gives a really nice soft radiance and just kind of like a subtle sun-kissed glow. I find this is really nice if you want to go for like a really really bronze look and you're not a super tan person because if I use a regular like matte bronzer all over my face it looks muddy. This I can do like a bronzer on the perimeter of my face and then this in the center and it looks really natural and just really radiant. If you have this in your collection and you've never tried using it that way I definitely recommend it. So next of course I have to talk about blush. You guys know blush is just like my obsession. I have an entire drawer in my vanity that is just blushes. I just love them and so I narrowed it down to four which may not seem like narrowing it down that much but believe me it is for me. First up is a product I believe I actually mentioned in last year's yearly favorites so you know it's a good one and that is the Benefit Rockateur Box Powder. This is just I don't even really know how to describe this, but this is the blush that I reach for when I'm doing like an eye look or like a bold lip or whatever, and I don't know what blush to pair with it because, I mean, you don't want your makeup to clash at all. And this is just like the perfect foolproof blush when you need something to just throw on to kind of tie everything together. It goes with literally everything, I swear. I have paired this with literally anything and everything throughout the time I've had it. Neutral eyes, bright eyes, colored brows, like black lips, like it literally goes with anything so definitely a staple a must-have in anyone's collection I think so that is what Benefit Rockateur looks like swatch there the next blush I want to talk about is NARS Madly now this is what I actually have on today and it is also like a go-to kind of like neutral blush for me when I want to do more of like a warm tone makeup look specifically this is also I feel like a blush that just kind of goes with everything I really reach for it a lot in the fall though that's Rockateur and then that is NARS Madly there as you can see it is a little bit more neutral it's a little bit less warm. It's just like a satin finish and I just honestly just reach for it a lot this year. Next up I have Hourglass Mood Exposure, another very neutral blush. Apparently I really like neutral blushes this year. But this is kind of like a plum, pinky kind of plum blush. And this is really nice when you just want that kind of like effortlessly chic kind of look. There it is there. As you can see, it's a little bit more plummy and a little bit more mauve. This is just perfect if you want to do like light minimal eye makeup, but then you're getting like a little bit like dressed up kind of because it just, it really ties everything together. And like I said, it looks very chic. And finally for blush, we have what was my favorite back in the spring, especially. And this is Becca Flower Child. This is just like a really standard pretty pink blush. I would highly recommend this if you're someone who's basically not as high maintenance when it comes to blush as I am like you're not someone who needs an entire drawer full of options you just want like a good everyday blush it's just the perfect like wearable pink color all of the Becca blushes are like so smooth and buttery too and they none of them are really glittery from what I've seen but they all have the most beautiful glow so that is flower child there as you can see it's just a very standard wearable kind of warm tone pink and then two kind of random face products that I just want to throw in first is the Anastasia Anastasia Contour Kit, just the classic original kind of powder one. This isn't the best option for my skin tone in a lot of different ways, but I've recently fallen back in love with using them to set my under eyes. I actually mix together vanilla and banana and it creates like a really nice under eye setting powder. What I use today once again, and I think it looks really nice and bright and flawless. It has kind of a smoothing effect too. And finally for face products, I have a product that I have talked to death this year. You guys are probably like, oh my gosh, stop talking about this. I can't find my bigger size of it, so this is like a point perk size. And it is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. I use this to set my makeup and it just makes all of my makeup melt into my skin. And it just makes everything look so natural and like it's really nice to blend out highlight as well. Like I'll spray it on and then blend out my highlight when it's still just like slightly damp. And it just takes away that powdery finish. If you're someone who like layers on the powder products like I do, this is amazing for setting your makeup. All right, so I wanna talk about brows really quick. My favorite brow product that I discovered this year is Anastasia Brow Wiz. This product isn't new to anyone, but it was new to me this year. I tried it for the first time back in August and I just fell in love with how easy it is. It's just a really fine tip pencil and then you get a spoolie on one end. It's just so much faster than doing powder which is what I've always done in the past and I've just fallen in love with it. So for eyes I actually have a couple eye primers that I want to talk about. First is a new discovery this year and it's something that I have fallen in love with. It is the Tarte Clean Slate 360 Creaseless Eye Primer. Now I'm sure most of you guys don't even know Tarte has just like a standard clear kind of eye primer. But I love this and I think it is a product more people need to know about. It is so great. It's like a really thin consistency. And it's white when you squeeze it out and it has like a slightly 
very subtle kind of like pearlescent kind of quality to it like I said it's extremely subtle it's not going to like look white on your lids but it just has this kind of effect where it like brightens up your eyeshadows and just really makes your eyeshadows pop without like significantly lightening them or anything and I love that it's so thin it never gets like goopy on your eyelids or anything like that which is a problem I've had with other primers in the past and of course never makes my eyeshadow crease keeps it on flawlessly all day long then my Too Faced shadow insurance glitter glue you guys know this is like my secret weapon it is a major holy grail for me I use after I have done all my blending in my crease I dab a little bit of this onto my lid and it just increases the pigmentation of any shadow by like 10 times I'm not even joking you I actually have a photo comparison from my Instagram that I'll have linked down below showing a shadow swatch just on its own and then with glitter glue underneath it it will honestly blow your mind If you just want to take your eye makeup to like the next level and really elevate it, this is something you need in your life. So before we get into palettes, I want to talk a little bit about some single eyeshadows that I really love this year. If you've been with me since like last spring, then this one is not going to come as any surprise to you. And it is the Flower Beauty Cream Shadow in Wild Geranium. This stuff is just so good. I honestly wore it every day for at least like five or six months. I could not get enough of this in spring and summer. And I still use it on a pretty regular basis now. And it is just a rose gold cream shadow. The formulation of this is really nice. It's very different than other cream shadows. It's a little bit more like moussey and a little bit more liquidy. I can wear this completely on its own on my lids and it never creases or anything like that. And it stays put all day. That's it there, swatch. Perfect to just throw on with your finger or you can layer other shadows over top of it and it looks beautiful as well. Then I have a ColourPop shadow which is also rose gold. I love rose gold eyes and I find it a lot more flattering on me than just like a stark gold. Now this is the ColourPop shadow in Amaze. Really similar color, it's just like a little bit more glittery and a little bit more gold. I'd say the Flower Beauty one is a little bit more pink, swatch there. And it does have some kind of like chunky silver glitter in it too. If you have like similar complexion and like hair color and eye color to me, you will love rose gold shadows on your lid and it's just so flattering and easy. Another super flattering just single eyeshadow, this is Laura Mercier African Violet. It is friggin' stunning. It is like a soft lavender with like a really soft golden sheen to it. It is also beautiful once again if you have like similar complexion and like hair color and everything to me. It just has so much dimension. It's so stunning. You will absolutely love this and if you have green eyes it will really make them pop and stand out. So on to eyeshadow palettes. First one is just my Tarte Tartlet palette. Like need I even say more? I've literally used this every single day that I've worn eyeshadow in 2015. It is just like a matte neutral palette with some like slight kind of like purple tones to it. Force of Nature, that shade right there is my transition shade that I use every single day without fail. You guys know I'm obsessed. Everybody needs a solid matte neutral palette in their collection and this is amazing. They're so easy to work with and so easy to blend. My next eyeshadow palette favorite is something insanely basic. You guys are going to be like, what is this, 2010? But I love my Urban Decay Naked palette, just the original Naked palette. I am actually like super late to the bandwagon with this. I got this late 2014 like I think in November or December I finally got it and I just really like it like there's a reason it's so popular or was so popular it's just like a really solid neutral palette it's what I use on my eyes today with the Tarte palette a little bit yeah if you have held off on getting this for as long as I did definitely go pick it up or if you have it in your collection and haven't used it in a million years dig it out again and discover it all over again then I have a Morphe palette that I want to talk about now this is actually a bright palette this is the 35B and this is just like a really vibrant kind of rainbow shadow palette. I actually reached for this palette a lot this year. Anytime I was doing even like a subtly colorful eye look, I reached for this. I like this because it has a lot of really good matte colorful shadows. And they're not super pigmented, which actually works in their favor. Like they're very easy to build up. So I could take like say this like neon pink here. And it's not like too overly pigmented that it's like insane. Like that's it swatch there, just like a really light swipe. So you can really take your brush and just really take a little bit of color at a time and kind of build it up. It's just really easy to work with and very user friendly. If you want to get into doing more like colorful eye looks but you're afraid of looking like a clown, I highly recommend checking this out. Morphe is obviously very affordable as well. Finally for eyes, I want to do mascaras. I have two favorite mascaras for the year. 
I have a very love-hate relationship with mascara and my eyelashes, but I did pick two favorites. The first is the Benefit Roller Lash, which was new this year. This is nice when I just want like a really simple kind of fanned out, curled, lifted eyelash kind of look. My lashes are extremely straight and holding a curl is my number one thing that I need in a mascara. And I really like this. It just has kind of like the kind of silicone wand, just little short bristles and really good for just lifting your lashes. And then I have the Hourglass Film Noir Full Spectrum Mascara, another one that I think I mentioned in last year's favorites, and I really only had this for the beginning of the year, but it was a really big standout favorite for me. The wand on this is pretty standard, it's just like a normal kind of like fiber wand, but it has fairly short bristles and like a slight kind of curve, so it's like a really like subtle hourglass shape. This really adds quite a bit of drama to my short, stumpy, straight lashes, holds a curl really well once again, and it actually has a lash conditioner in it that works really well, I found. And I actually need to repurchase this because this is a million years old and I haven't used it in forever because of that, and I really want to go back to it. Also, it's not as expensive as you would think. When I first heard that Hourglass had a mascara, I was like, that's going to be like $60, like no big deal. But it's like average, like high-end mascara prices. It's not like insane. Finally, we have lips. Now you are going to see a definite theme for my favorite lip products of 2015. I didn't do anything that interesting. I wore a lot of pink lips. And my favorite, which is like my new holy grail, like everyday lipstick, I'm in love with it. You guys already know it is Clinique Beige Pop from the Clinique Pop Lipstick range. I honestly have not worn anything else except for maybe once or twice since I bought this at the beginning of October. It's what I have on now. It is my perfect flawless nude. I have fair skin, but then I also have very pigmented lips naturally, so finding a nude that looks good on me has been like a hellish process. So this came into my life like a little beam of light. It was amazing. <laughs> This is a lipstick that like I already know I'm going to totally use up and repurchase because I just wear it every single day and it goes with everything. I love the formulation of this. It's very creamy and it's extremely opaque. That's my big thing for like nudes and lighter lip colors. They need to be perfectly opaque or my natural lip color shows through and it ends up looking weird but this perfectly cancels out my natural lip color. It's hydrating. It's really really creamy and moisturizing for how opaque it is. Usually when you get that kind of opacity they tend to be a little bit more drying and matte, but this is super hydrating. I just love it. If I haven't convinced you already to go try it from the millions of times I've already raved about it, this is your signal to go pick it up. I suppose I should probably swatch some things here, so I'll swatch Beige Pop even though I already have it on. So that is Beige Pop right there. On a similar note, I also really love Too Faced Melted Peony. This is really similar. It's just a lot more pink, basically. So there's Melted Peony right there. I also really love the NYX Butter Lipsticks and Butter Glosses this year. One of my first favorites was Taffy for the Butter Lipsticks. Another just kind of like brighter, slightly more like bubblegummy kind of pink, but not like too bright. I also really liked Razzle, which this one's more of like a berry. This is kind of the only different <laughs> lip shade I'm going to be showing you, but that is Razzle there. And these are once again extremely creamy, a little bit more sheer than the Clinique lipsticks, but still really nice. And then two butter glosses that were favorites for me. These ones just smell so good. This one is in the shade Vanilla Cream Pie. And I like these glosses because they can kind of be layered over any of the lipsticks I'm showing here. Because they're pigmented, but they're not like super opaque. And then this one is Strawberry Parfait. So once again, vanilla cream pie there and then strawberry parfait. So both just really nice pinks. This one's a little bit more bright and vibrant. For lip liners, I really love the ColourPop lip liners. My favorite is Scandi, which is actually like a super vibrant hot pink. Like, I don't know if it's going to show up as bright on camera, but it's like insanely intense. And I've loved all of my ColourPop lip liners. I can actually wear these on my own because they're still creamy and hydrating enough. They don't dry out my lips at all. Then I also have Maybelline Blushing Bud with another really big one that I loved in the springtime. And this one is actually even more similar to Beige Pop. It's just once again slightly more pink, but these two are closer definitely. And then one I really liked when I had a tan over the summer, this is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in Zurich. This one, it's a little bit more of like a peachy kind of like brown kind of tone. It was like a really, really nice kind of like warmer nude when I had a tan. Like I said, I haven't reached for it as much recently, but I still really like the shade. And then finally, I have my Dior Lip Glow. You guys know I love this stuff. I haven't been using it recently because I'm like essentially out. Like that's all I have left. But it's a lip balm that like adjusts to your skin's natural pH levels to create your perfect shade of pink. It's hydrating. It has SPF. It has like a nice like subtle like minty chocolatey kind of smell. Love 
love, love, love it. Need to repurchase. I use this a lot in the summer too and also when I'm on vacation once again because of the SPF. So expensive but so worth it if you are someone like me who just loves those easy lip products you can just like chuck on without a mirror and not worry about. That was all of my makeup favorites for 2015. That was a lot. I chucked everything on the floor, so that's why I'm looking there. This video is going to be super long, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I am going to be doing a part two, which is going to be all of the kind of miscellaneous kind of beauty products I've been loving this year, so be sure to stay tuned for that. <laughs> That was weird. I don't know what I just did there, but make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Once again, thank you guys so much for all of your support this year. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and like I just said, subscribe if you haven't already. It makes my day, and I will talk to all of you in part two. Bye, guys.